In this segment, you're going to meet uh, Bob Hunter, one of the true giants in the venue management industry. Uh, Bob started his career way back uh, in the 80s working at Ontario Place in Toronto. Yes, he's Canadian. Uh, he spent a good bit of time out uh, on the west coast of Canada, uh, working in Vancouver uh, on uh, a number of big facilities there before coming back to Toronto. Uh, where he helped in the construction of the $600 million Sky Dome, which is now the Rogers Center and home to the Toronto Blue Jays. Bob's current position um, is as Vice President and General Manager of Toronto's Air Canada Center, which is the home of the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Toronto Raptors, the NBA team. Uh, it is recognized as one of the premier facilities in the world, uh, certainly one of the busiest facilities in the world. Uh, and Bob has a tremendous amount of experience um, um, managing not only this facility, but a number of other facilities over his career. So in this segment, he's going to talk about uh, managing the fan experience um, from a venue perspective. Uh, one of the key points he makes in this segment is that while we can't control what goes on in the ice or on the court, there are a host of things that we can control within the venue business that will enhance the fan experience. So... A lot of people speak to us about why we spend so much time, effort, resources, and dollars on fan experience. Well, the reality is that as venue managers and venue operators, we really have no choice on or direction on what happens on the court and what happens on the ice. So those people that come in to see a concert, a hockey game, a basketball game, or a lacrosse game, we can't influence that outcome. But what we can influence is all their touch points and experiences that they have in this building. So that when they walk out, and we've just been beaten badly by any a, a visiting opponent, at least we can be, feel rest assured that we've given every effort to ensure that every other thing that happened in the building, except the result of that game, has been a positive experience and will make them think about coming back again. You know, they, tickets are expensive in our venue very expensive. So we've got to ensure that everything outside of the results of that event, game, etc., is a positive experience for them. So what are the basic principles behind creating a positive fan experience? Well, first of all, when they walk through these doors, they're looking for <clears throat> the basics. That is cleanliness, safety, friendliness, uh, good food at a good value, positive staff interaction about what they, what they experience and what their expectations are. So they've already set those expectations before they walk in the door. Our responsibility, our role, and our task and challenge is to ensure that we both meet those criteria, those expectations, but in any way, shape, or form that we can exceed it is a big windfall for us. We really believe that a happier fan will actually spend more money when they're in the building. We found and statistically shown that based upon whether our teams win or lose, we can see a 10% influence, rightly or wrongly, at the end of an event, both in food and beverage and in merchandise sales. So that experience is controllable and is an important investment for us long term. So again, to execute and deliver on that fan experience, that's not just lip service that can be you know, repeated and repeated and repeated. You really have to develop, and we have over the years developed a culture where every employee realizes that fan first is the ultimate goal. Our program currently, which we've been working with for the last three to four years is called Elevate. And Elevate's mandate is taking that service to the next level. We've worked with both Disney, the NBA, and the NHL on similar programs that they would like to see across the board on all 30 of their teams. And so we take what we think is the best pieces of those different programs and try and deliver it to all of our part-time employees. Between the Air Canada Centre and the other venues that we manage, we have over 3,000 part-time employees. We do everything in-house, so food and beverage, retail, front of house, back of house, is all our employees, which does in fact allow us to control the message. It allows us to create that culture, to repeat that culture, to repeat that vision and that va those values, and to ensure that not just every September when you come back to work for our sports seasons, 
but on an ongoing basis, you are reminded and reminded and reminded again about that whole Elevate program. And we believe that with so much unfortunate turnover in our event staff, just by the nature of the jobs, that we have to focus on it on a regular basis. This is, a, this is something that comes monthly, it comes weekly. We reward people, we recognize people for additional Elevate. And uh, it's working. What measurement criteria are we using to actually ensure that that execution is actually happening at the front lines? Well, there's a number of different things that we do. Simple fan research on a regular basis. We've done secret shopper programs for 20 years and different programs, different companies. But the reality is, is that criteria and that measurement tool has allowed us to motivate our employees to bigger and better things. We do in internal secret management shoppers. We do rewards programs where if you've seen something happening that you award the employee immediately. The number of awards that are given out or rewards that are given out are measured against month to month, year to year, and how do you ensure that that's happening. The other thing is that we spend the, or sorry, the NHL and the NBA both do internal research in the arenas once per year. We take that as a very, very important measurement criteria and learn from that so it provides us with continuous improvement opportunities on what we need to focus on and how we need to go about it. And we also have instituted an internal employee reward program where employees can reward employees for well-recognized service points or service execution points. And that seems to be working. And it's not just to their friends. You know, as we try to increase our service level, try to elevate that Elevate program, uh, we've certainly had a couple of uh, clunkers over the years. And, uh, and one of them was what we thought was going to be an ultimate solution where we created a texting program in the arena. Many buildings have them these days. And uh, we couldn't get anyone to text us when something was going wrong. So whether it was a cleaning issue, my seat's broken, or the guy three over is being obnoxious with profanity and drinking too much, we just couldn't convince the fans to use it. Now, repetition, repetition of the message, but over the years it has not been the program that we ever thought it would. Similarly, you know, when we developed our building app, again, an opportunity to connect with our fans in a much better um, and data-driven way has just not taken off the way that we thought it would. And, and where we were trying to get more and more intelligence about our fans and, and their likes and dislikes, um, it just isn't there yet. And we've yet to figure out a solution as to how to get that. Everyone will come in and try and sell you these great tools, but boy, oh boy, if they don't work, you know, you may have spent a few dollars and at the end of the day, you may just have to abandon them. You know, over the years, I think one of the, all the sophisticated sports companies have been trying to better understand their fan. So call them CRM programs, customer relationship management programs, have been developed <clears throat> and continue to be developed in the effort to try and better understand your fan. What data can you gather? When did they arrive at the building? What are they spending their money on? How many jerseys did they buy in the last few years? How many tickets did they buy for the Raptors versus buy for the Leafs? How many concert tickets did they buy? What are their likes and dislikes? Literally, when's their birthday and what are their kids' names? So a major effort, and we certainly as an, uh, a big company have made big financial commitment of time, resources, and people to try and better understand that. The big challenge though is you get all that data. You collect it over years. The big question is, what do you do with it? How do you mine it properly? And how do you get at it to, again, make you more understanding of what your fan wants? That's the ultimate goal. If you understand what your fan wants, you think you should be able to understand where they may be an opportunity to spend more money with us. And those efforts are ongoing, they're continuing. I would suggest that today we have eight to 10 to 12 people and that is all that they do, is mine data and try and better understand our customers.